Hey guys, Shatterock here with a news update on Blaster Master 03. Today we're discussing Limited Run Games' announcement that they are releasing a physical version for Blaster Master 03, complete with a collector's edition and all that stuff. Some of the materials even have some spoilers in there that we'll get into. After that, we're going to put a couple new screenshots that have come out under the magnifying glass. So let's rock! Limited Run Games did announce that they're coming out with a BMZ3 physical release. Like with 1 and 2, the platforms of choice here are the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 4. You have the standard version, which is $29.99 US dollars, the classic edition for $54.99, and the limited collector's edition for $89.99 US dollars. Pre-orders go live on June 4th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and will close on July 11th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. As usual, this is an open pre-order, so you don't have to worry about availability, as long as you place your order within the time frame. And obviously, don't expect this to come out on launch day. The physical editions are still in manufacturing, meaning they're going to take several months to actually be shipped. You'll be lucky if it comes out at Christmas time, so do keep that in mind when you're ordering. Anyways, the standard edition comes with the cartridge, the interior art, and a full color manual. And what's more, Limited Run's Blaster Master 03 physical will include the Japanese voiceovers that we talked about a while ago as an exclusive. Yes, you heard me right. It's an exclusive to Limited Run. Well, now that I've said it out loud, let's address that elephant in the room first. As a quick recap, Inti Creates announced that they were working on Japanese voiceovers for Blaster Master 1, 2, and 3 for their upcoming Blaster Master Zero Trilogy, which is a Japanese-only compilation of all three games that's coming out on July 29th, along with the digital versions of BMZ3. Ever since that announcement, the question has been in the air about whether we're actually going to get it on the digital versions or it's going to be physical only. Our friend Sid, who helps run the Gunvolt Wiki, was the first one who told us that on the Japanese website for Blaster Master Zero Trilogy, it states that the digital versions of both games will be updated with the voices. However, that information was not posted on the English side of the website. Which then brings us to the limited run thing, where they are now saying that the Japanese voiceovers is exclusive to their release. Of course, what I think they mean by that is that in terms of Western releases without having to import the trilogy from Japan, that's going to be the only way you're going to be able to get the voiceovers. And actually that is the case. When this news came out, some fans, including myself, were understandably confused by all of this. So I took it upon myself to do my due diligence and reach out to Matt Papa from NT to shed some light on the situation. And this is what he got back to me with. The best way I can describe the Japanese voiceover situation is as follows. The Japanese voiceover was created to be content that was exclusive in bold to the Japanese physical release of Blaster Master Zero Trilogy. The fact that the voiceover for Blaster Master Zero 3 will be packed into the limited run release at all is a very special exception that I worked hard to make happen. Besides said special exception, the only way to get the voiceover, especially for BMZ 1 and 2, is to purchase the trilogy. At this time, there are no plans to add the voiceover digitally or mess up the current exclusivity setup in any way. I hope that all makes sense. So, there you have it from the man himself. In conclusion then, if you want BMZ 3 with the voiceovers, you have to settle with either the limited run release or import the trilogy from Japan. And if you want the BMZ 1 and 2 voiceovers on top of that, you're going to have to import the trilogy regardless. I'm not sure what the deal with that Japanese website mentioned for the patches was, but I don't think either Sid or Matt was lying about it. I'm willing to believe that it was a mistake on someone's part when creating the website. Regardless, there ain't no two ways about it. The news is a bummer. But at the same time, I do understand that the original intent was to have these be exclusive to the trilogy in Japan, giving fans that buy the trilogy something extra to experience. I also asked Matt if anyone that bought the limited run version of BMZ 1 and 2 would get the voiceovers, mostly for feature parody between that and the Japanese trilogy, but for what he's saying it sounds like that's not going to happen either. 
since the limited run release happened before Trilogy was announced. Again, that's a bummer because the limited run stuff looks amazing. I own the collector's edition myself for 1 and 2, and I can vouch that it is probably one of the best collector's editions for a video game I've ever owned. We'll go into more detail about it in just a moment, but the BMC3 collector's edition from limited run is no slouch either. It looks freaking amazing. And you know, at least they were able to get voice acting on that one. But at the same time, for most people who don't really care about that stuff and just wants the voiceovers for all three games, I'd have to recommend just importing the trilogy version. It comes out on launch and you get all of your content in one package right there. Not to mention that this is like most Switch releases, it should have an English option as well. Not for the voices mind you, but at least for the text. I can say, at least for myself, this leaves me in a special predicament. I want the limited run release because it pairs so well with the one I already own, but at the same time I want those voices for 1 and 2 man, and that means I'll probably have to import the trilogy as well, especially so I can cover it on the channel maybe. And you know what NT? If that was the intent, congratulations you got my money, big time, Woo boy. All I can say now is, I really do hope this ends up being a time exclusive thing, and maybe half a year, a couple years down the line, we might see the voiceovers be patched into digital versions anyways, but I can at least say for launch day, you will unfortunately have to settle for the characters being mute if you go digital. That also means both Xbox and PC players will be missing out on the voiceovers since there are no physical releases planned for those platforms. Which is another reason why, yeah, I hope they do end up just patching it later on, even if it's not at launch. As much as I do agree that the Collector's Edition should have something special, and that is indeed a heck of a special thing to include, I am a firm believer that when it comes to game content such as that, everybody should at least get a chance to experience it at some point. I don't even mind if they come out with a paid voiceover DLC for each game. At least it's there for anyone interested in it, and they make some money back on it too. Win-win. Because we all know, voice acting ain't cheap. So it does become a question of will they get back what they paid for. I guess they're hoping they will get that back with the trilogy release. And if they do, great. But man, some DLC for the rest of us would be nice. That's enough rambling though. But definitely let us know in the comments what you think about the whole voiceover situation. Let's return to the limited run classic and collector's editions then, as there is a lot to see here. So on top of all the stuff I mentioned for the standard edition, the $59.99 US dollar classic edition comes with the retro styled box. In that retro styled box, we get a boss spoiler for BMZ3. Although to be fair, I think this is a type of boss that everybody should have expected to return. It does appear that BMC3 will continue the tradition of having its own version of the Skeleton Boss. In the original NES Blaster Master, we had the Plutonium Boss, BMZ1 had the Skeleton Boss, and BMZ2 had the Serbi Boss. Meanwhile, BMZ3's boss carries the same motif from its previous incarnation, having three heads, and on top of that has a new head that appears to shoot some kind of laser beam or lightning. I'm thinking the other two heads may be references to the previous two bosses. But the most notable thing about this boss is that it's more mechanical in nature instead of just being a straight mutant. Perhaps suggesting that this boss is man-made. Maybe by the Sophia forces? Or whoever is the mastermind in this game. Either way, pretty cool. We also have... The retro style dust sleeve, an 18 by 24 inch poster that is reversible, so you get the key art on one side, and another nice little piece of artwork that shows Jason and Eve being reunited. Aww, that's wholesome. You can also find the outline of a metal attacker and the good boy Fred there too. The last thing that comes with the classic edition is the original soundtrack, which features the official artwork for Jason and Thick Eve. Moving over to the Collector's Edition, which retails for $89.99 US dollars, brings us a couple more revelations. On top of everything we've already talked about in the Standard and Classic Editions, the Collector's Edition comes with art cards, which features Jason, Eve, and the guy Sophia SV, a commemorative NES cartridge, 
which mind you is not functional. It's not going to have the game on there. So don't get any ideas. A certificate of authenticity, just showing what your edition is out of how many that were made. Which then leaves us with the last two things that are the most interesting to talk about. Just like with the other collector's editions for 1 and 2, we get a 3 inch metal tank figure. Now the BMZ 1 and 2 collector's editions had the Sophia 3rd and the Gaia Sophia respectively for theirs. However, this time around, BMZ 3's collector's edition features a, well, it's just titled Metal Attacker, keeping an air of mystery about it. We do get a slight hint, however, thanks to Matt on the Twitter page, saying that, hey, this metal attacker looks familiar. Well, I guess it's down to me to take the first shot in the dark as to what it could be. Personally, I believe this metal attacker looks the closest to the original Famicom Sophia the Third that was featured in the, well, Famicom version of Metafight, which ended up being Blaster Master over here. We can see that both tanks lack the guards on the wheels that were later added for the Zero version of the Sophia. The main gun looks similar, the cockpit looks kind of like it. The main thing that stands out on the model here is the antenna up top. But otherwise, it seems pretty close, at least to me. And if it ends up being the original Sophia from Metafight, I believe this tank right here only serves to prove the Kane Garner theory. You know, the guy and girl in the key art, that the current running theory is that they are Kane and Jennifer from Metafight. And actually, if you look even closer behind them in the key art, you will find the same circular barrel that belongs to the same metal attacker in the collector's edition. Wow! We figured something out! So you know what? That's my theory. I think whatever this metal attacker ends up being, it definitely belongs to this Kane Gardner quote-unquote guy. Of course, we haven't gotten any character bios on him just yet, but either they will give us a bio before launch at some point, or they're gonna keep us in the dark about him until we play. We'll see. The last interesting thing is the cover art for the box itself. You see at the corner there it says cover art pairs with the Blaster Master Zero and Blaster Master Zero 2 Duo Collector's Box, which I own actually. And you can see how the cape on the right side of the Duo Box blends in perfectly with the cape for BMZ3 Jason on the other box. And I can confirm that cape is indeed there on my own box I own in real life. So there's a bit of a mind blown moment for you. The BMZ 1 and 2 Collector's Editions were announced in June of 2020. Just think about that for a moment. We had a part of Jason's BMZ 3 cape on the box art, plain as day to see, for a good 10 months before BMC 3 was finally announced. Granted, the Collector's Edition wasn't shipped and in my hands until the week that BMZ 3 was announced, like a couple days before. But still, the hint was there for a good 10 months. You just have to look at the picture. Now, that's not as mind-blowing as, say, the Mega Man 11 tease in Legacy Collection 2, but it's still kind of funny that it happened. They clearly had that stuff planned out ahead of time, and I give them major props for that. Bravo! With that being said, we've covered the Limited Run Collector's Edition, and all the other news coming from them as well. Nice. Just a reminder, Pre-orders go up on June 4th, and will go until July 11th. So if you really want BMZ3 voice acting without importing, this is your chance. Just keep in mind it's not going to be available at launch. The website in fact says it could take up to 5 months for that. So just keep that in mind. All we got left for you today is a couple of new screenshots from the NT Twitter, as they've been sharing some of the character bios that we covered before, but with new content to look over. Here we have a cutscene in an area with many spikes around, but more importantly, we find ourselves talking to Eve via transmission presumably, so you get a look at her mugshot for the game. Meanwhile, the text is awfully interesting, saying, I swear I'll end it. Until then, Jason, you survive. Of course, we don't know what she means by end it. Maybe it has something to do with the reason why the Sophia forces captured her. But at the very least, she seems determined to solve the problem on her own. But at the same time, she's sounding kinda like she's prepared to die. Which doesn't bode well, does it? I swear, she better not die at the end of this game. I'm onto you, Inti. At the very least, it looks like Eve is not gonna be gone the whole game until the very end. 
at least you'll be able to talk to her sometimes at least through either cutscenes or hopefully they might be able to work in the usual communications banter they had from the first two games. But we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Meanwhile, our second set of screenshots, as provided by the Japanese Anti-Creates page, has some gameplay implications that's very interesting. In this scenario, we have Fred here, and reminder, Jason, Eve, and Fred got separated during the beginning of the game by the Sophia forces. Presumably this is the scene where Jason catches up with Fred and is able to retrieve him. We find our poor good boy trapped in an enclosed space with a high ceiling. The only issue is the guy Sophie is not going to be able to get in there. As you can see right before it, there is a crawl space that only Jason himself can enter. But wait, doesn't Jason die if he falls even a couple of inches? Well that don't appear to be a problem in Blaster Master Zero 3 because it looks like Inti Creates has given Jason a hover ability with a little jetpack that you can see right there in the second screenshot. And man, this is glorious, because this is something I've personally been asking for for a long time. I get it. Fall damage was a part of the original Blaster Master series and it makes sense to carry it over. But man, it could be kind of annoying sometimes. That's why when BMZ3 was first announced, I was like, okay, so are they gonna show Jason like falling or anything? Because I wanna see if they address the fall damage thing. We did see that when he hops out of the tank, he does a homing shot, so it did give us the idea that they would be adding new abilities to Jason outside of the tank, not just in the top down sections, but the side view sections as well. And that just continues on with this new hover ability, effectively negating the issues with the fall damage. Thank God, thank you NT, oh my goodness, that is so good. I guess they heard enough of us complaining about that one planet in BMZ2 where if you fall off the ladder you're dead. So they're like, you know what, we should take a look at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy about that. We may have a masterful game on our hands here. Hopefully. Guys, that would do it for today's Blaster Master Zero 3 news roundup. How do you guys feel about the whole voiceover situation? Do you guys wish that they would bring it over to the digital versions in the form of a patch? Would you pay for it if it was paid DLC? And what do you think about everything else we covered today? Let us know in the comments. And thank you for watching. As always, stay tuned to Shadrock ZX for all things Blaster Master, Inti Creates, and Mega Man. Thank you to all of our Shadowrock ZX channel members, including SA Class supporter Kaibaman41, and our GA Class supporters, Vent Crystals, Rose Maverick Saiyan, Adrian Cauldron, Ray Stinger, LML123, Rico Syndrome, and Austin Boofer. It's thanks to you guys' support that keeps this channel running. Also, I have a quick channel update for the upcoming two months leading into Blaster Master Zero 3. I will be reviewing BMZ 3 around its launch, but before I get to that, I have yet to properly review the first two titles in the series, and since it is a trilogy, it would feel kind of wrong to do BMZ3 without the other two as well. For that reason, leading up to launch on July 29th, I will be reviewing Blaster Master Zero 01 and Zero 02 as well. However, in order to do that, I need to record some new footage for these games. That means I'll also be doing a BMZ 1 and 2 series of streams, we'll call it the Road to Blaster Master Zero 03 series, where I'm going to stream one or two campaigns of BMZ 1 and 2 each week leading up to BMZ 3. These will also double as my raw footage recording streams. So together, we'll be able to re-experience these titles including their DLC and find out how I really feel about Jason's first two adventures. It ought to be fun, so definitely stay tuned for more stream scheduling information each week as it comes. Since both games have so many DLC campaigns, prepare for the long haul. Unfortunately, we're going to have to do without the voice acting, given what we just covered in this video, but it is what it is. Anyway, I'll see you in the cockpit of Sophia.